Hey, greetings one another. Welcome to the Orchard Online. Ah, it's good to be with you. I want to let you know that if you would like to connect with me, you can do that by sending along an email to info at orchardnh.org. That'll give me a chance to hear from you and understand what's going on in your life. I'd love to connect with you that way. And as you have the opportunity, please reach out to me with a prayer request, a need, a concern, a thought. I'd love to interact with you in that way. Again, info at orchardnh.org. Today we finish our series on the rushing wind, the person of the Holy Spirit. And today as we take a look at where we're living our life from, the place that we, we center our mind, the place from which we make our decisions, our life choices. I call it the mind address. As we take the opportunity to bring together the work of God's word through his spirit within our hearts and minds over these past weeks, uh, I pray today will be as it has been for me, a day of identifying myself. Am I living in what I call the fortress of the flesh? Or am I living in the community of the Spirit? We're going to take a closer look at that. So find your Bible, open it to Galatians chapter 5, open your device to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to pick up in verse 19 and read through verse 26. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at this. One of our basic shared life experiences is that we have a way of indicating this is where I live. We call it an address. Even in a simple culture, our address might be something as simple as, well, I live under a certain tree that everybody knows, or I lived at a bend in the path, or I live next to a waterfall on a river. In a more complex culture like ours, we have addresses with numbers and street names. We identify where we live that way. If, if we have a presence on the web, we have an IP address associated with our computer, with our phone, with our iPad, all these different ways that we identify our address. Most of us have an email address. And I want to explore today a different sort of address with you. I call it a mind address. It's my way of looking at the world. It's the place where I find meaning in life. And I want to suggest to you that your mind address is the framework, the guiding principle, the reason for who you are and what you do. The choices you make come out of your mind address. I want to explore this idea that the Spirit of God, the rushing wind we have talked about over these weeks, that the rushing wind, when He fills your life, He changes your mind address. You have had a change of address because the Spirit of the living God has brought into you a new reality. The finished and accomplished work of Jesus brought into your life in such a way that you can say, I live at a different place. I live from a different place. I have a new address. And as much as we might negatively respond to life being put into a category or to talk about life as being an address, I, I want to explore two places where humanity, myself included, looks for meaning in life, looks for a way of locating myself, looks for my way of, of putting a point of reference from which I view and see the world around me, my address. Not just a place where I can be found, 
but the place from which I live. I call the two places the fortress of the flesh or the community of the spirit. And so listen and read along with me this description of our mind addresses. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 5, Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impure, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, Lord, may they be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Anytime we move our home location, we fill out a change of address form at the post office. We have to let the postal carriers know that we're no longer living there. We've moved to a new address. And among the many, many hassles and struggles of moving from one place to another, changing our address is an essential part of that change of location. We're living in a different place. We have to get a new license. We have to go through a great deal of trouble of letting others know, I live in a new place. Oh, when I get a new email address, I have to let other people know that's my new email address and I have to receive my emails at a new address. I believe as a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit brings about a change of mind address, the place you find meaning. I believe the Holy Spirit brings about a change of your mind address, the place where you find meaning, the place from which you make choices, the place where you live from in life. And the Holy Spirit brings that about. Now, I described earlier that I believe there's two places from our portion of scripture today described as places, mind addresses, where we can live. We can live in the fortress of the flesh, or we can live in the community of the spirit. So let's describe first the fortress of the flesh. And in the fortress of the flesh, life is lived apart from God. Oh, he may get a nod every now and then. We may bow our heads in prayer over a meal. But at the end of the day, I'm living my life from my mind address that is apart from God. God really has no place in the fortress of the flesh. Again, Paul writes these words. Let's hear them once again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and similar thing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In the fortress of the flesh. 
people find meaning in a variety of different ways, each of them ultimately apart from God. Let's unpack that a bit. In the fortress of the flesh, we can find meaning with our bodies, with our physical frames, sexual immor immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity. In the fortress of the flesh, our mind address says, I live my life through the tangible, the tactile, the physical part of my life. And I do it with someone else. I, I get myself over to another person in, in, in a way that is contrary to the heart of God. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity. I, I find meaning in the expression of my body. Or we find meaning with our idols, idolatry. We make up our own minds about where and how I will find life. And many of these idols, don't get me wrong, many of these idols can be really positive. Education, skill, bank accounts, our physical frame. You know, we, we get to a place in our life, especially as we are bombarded with images through advertising and other means. We get to a place where my mind address says, real meaning in life is found in a size five dress or a full head of hair. That's the real life. That's where I live from. I might even find meaning in the realm of spirits. Sorcery, Paul writes. And he says that in the fortress of the flesh, there is a street name, Sorcery. Just recently, back in May of this year, there was a gathering in Boston called Satan Con. Some 800 people gathered together. And the focus of their time was in the fortress of the flesh. And they, they built a temple on Sorcery Street. And they said, we gather together and we honor Satan in his ways. There's sorcery. In the fortress of the flesh, there's also a way of finding meaning and exerting power over others especially with those with whom we share our lives. In the fortress of the flesh, there's hatred, there's strife, there's jealousy, there's outbursts of anger. And we find meaning in exerting power over others. We find meaning in disputing where life's true meaning is found. We'll get together and we'll gather with other people. We'll develop a faction because we'll say, well, this is where life's true meaning is found. And it's always about the other. It's always about the other person being us versus them. It was selfish ambition and dissensions arise. We find meaning and disputing where life's meaning is found. <laughs> That's one of the ways we live out life in the fortress of the flesh. We find meaning and longing for what others having more of what we believe we need. We look at a person, we say, that person has more the essence and the meaning of life, and that's, a, that's what I want, and so I envy that other person. There's a street in the fortress of the flesh named envy. We find meaning by numbing our minds and our lives into nothingness. With drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar, we live in a very addictive, addiction-based culture. People numbing their mind to dress so that they feel nothing about life. We find meaning apart from God. The story of Scripture begins 
with a man and a woman making a choice contrary to the heart of God, where each of them reached out and took an apple, one from a tree, one from a hand. Each of them ate of the apple of the knowledge of good and evil. And each of them, like you and like me, try to find meaning in life apart from God, living in the fortress of the flesh. You know, in the fortress of the flesh, there's also a few streets named this. Religion, <laughs> philanthropy, altruism, being spiritual. Being spiritual is, is, is a broad way, is a big street, it's a highway in the fortress of the flesh where people seek to find meaning in life around spiritual truths, but those spiritual truths eventually push Jesus out of the picture. That's one of the addresses, one of the mind addresses one of the places from which we can live our life, I call it the fortress of the flesh. Or, or we can live in the community of the spirit and we find meaning in life because we are alive by the spirit of God. Again, what does that look like? What does it look like for us to live in the community of the Spirit. And how can I know that the Spirit has changed my mind address? That I'm no longer living in the fortress of the flesh, but I'm living here in the community of the Spirit. Hear our scripture once again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. The evidence of finding meaning alive in the Spirit is, I believe, the fruit of the Spirit. You see, because fruit is the evidence that a tree is alive and healthy. And in fact, fruit defines the tree. The apple trees on our property uh, this season. Unfortunately, that late frost in May came when the flowers were just budding and becoming pollinated on the trees. And that late frost in May froze those blossoms so that on our property this year we have very few, just, uh, just a handful of apples on the trees because of that late May frost which killed those buds. But there will be fruit next year. Uh, if there were no fruit next year though, and if the next year and the next year and the next year, no apples came off of the trees, we would begin to ask the question, there's something wrong with the trees. If there was never any fruit off of the trees, we might even ask the question, are those really apple trees? In a life lived apart from any fruit of the Spirit can be for us a wake-up call, spiritually, a wake-up call that says, am I living in the community of the Spirit? Has the Spirit changed my address so that I'm living in Christ's community? Or am I stuck in the fortress of the flesh. If we were to unpack some of that fruit of the Spirit, those indications of us being alive by the Spirit of God, we find them again, love, a very characteristic of God our Father. The scripture says that God is love. And any 
any expression of the community of the Spirit of God, it genuinely will have an expression of the Father's love, not just for us, but for others as well. And in the community of the Spirit, there's a frequent sound that's heard. It's the sound of joy. It's laughter. It's life. It's people experiencing Jesus and each other in such a way that joy overflows and fills the streets in the community of the Spirit with the very life of the Spirit. And in the community of the Spirit, there's peace. People working life out, people living well with each other, people having differences of opinion and even offenses that need to be reconciled and forgiveness to be given, but people living in peace, people living with patience. Not being such a hurry, in such a hurry that, you know, they tap the horn, flash the lights, get out of my way, I got some place to go. But with a regard for others, there's a willingness to wait and to be patient as a community, to be patient. In the community of the Spirit, there's kindness. There's kindness. People are known because they are kind to one another. There's goodness. This is a moral goodness. This is a way of living, a, a, way, a, a way of living that comes from the address of where I'm living my life from. And the Spirit has given it to me. There's faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This last fruit of the Spirit that we talk about is the only one that is really just between you and the Spirit of God. All, all the others have to do with how we live my life out in the community. And living life out in the community really does a great deal of self-control, of, of changing my mind in the way that I live my life, of changing my mind address so much so that I see myself differently. I see myself as a person controlled by the Spirit of God, a person under the power and the work of the Spirit of God. And each of those expressions of fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, each of them is an expression of the very character of Jesus. You see, because living alive in the community of the Spirit, we're filled with the very life of Jesus, and His life is lived out through us. But this, this fruit is not something that I can expect to passively grow. I, I just believe by my mind address has been changed. Well, that's, that's the same sort of thinking that, that would say, I, I moved to a new address, but I didn't tell anybody. I just ever expected everybody to find, I found, I expected the, the postman to find me. I expected others to find me, but I never told them that I had changed my address. No, to live in the community of the Spirit, to have a mind address changed by the Spirit, I actively orient my life and my choices around the fact of a new address. To live in the community of the Spirit indicates that I'm alive by the Spirit, and it indicates that I have died, in fact, crucified. Paul writes in verse 24, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The Spirit of God so completely incorporates us into the person of Jesus that we now share in Jesus' accomplishments. His life, His death, His burial, His resurrection, His ascension. I'm so completely incorporated into the person of Jesus that what Christ has accomplished have become mine as well. Earlier in this book, the Apostle Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now I, in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
that distinct understanding of the accomplishments of Jesus, of the change of address that the Holy Spirit has brought into my life, will forever change the world as I see it, will forever change the choices that I make. There is, by virtue of Jesus' death, the reality of you and I having died to the fortress of the flesh and having been brought into the community of the Spirit alive by the Spirit of God within us. But you still may be asking, what difference does living in the fortress of the flesh or living in the community of the Spirit make in regard uh, to Jesus, to you and, and myself living life right here, right now? What the difference does it make that the Spirit has changed the mind address, the place you find meaning in life? Let me answer it this way. I try to live my life with as many both and scenarios in life as possible. If I'm faced with a decision, a choice, a way of living my life, I'm going to look for the both and all the time. I'm going to look for a way that I can both be this and do that. For instance, I can both live in New England and still be a fan of the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yes, I can. In many ways, I've learned that living both and scenarios in life tends to grease the skids in living life. It's an easier way to live. But as a follower of Jesus, I must acknowledge this truth. Our scripture today describes two mind addresses, the fortress of the flesh or the community of the spirit. Two realms, one apart from God and one aligned and alive with God. And our scripture today challenges us to acknowledge our address, either in the fortress of the flesh or in the community of the Spirit. And more than a discussion about what I believe, you see, identifying myself by one mind address over the other has distinct consequences for today and eternal consequences for the future. Hear what the scripture says. If I am a person who is persistently practicing the way of life lived in the fortress of the flesh, the, the scripture describes for us this truth. If I am continually finding my meaning in life apart from God, the scripture says this about you. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is not a warning of condemnation. It is a warning of identification. If you persist in living in the fortress of the flesh, your mind address will influence your life's decisions. The works of your life will be an expression of your mind address. You will live apart from, apart from God and true to your address, the place where you find meaning in life. The very same thing could be said of the community of the Spirit, that if I persistently, faithfully live my life and make my choices, from those qualities of life described in the community of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, if I understand by virtue of the Spirit's work within me that that old way of life has come to an end, I died, I crucified it, it's been dealt with by Jesus. That if I persistently and faithfully orient my life, my mind, my choices around the community of the Spirit, the scripture teaches us that we will live alive with the Spirit of God. So, it comes to a choice to be made. Will I live in the fortress of the flesh 
or will I live in the community of the Spirit? When you look for meaning in life, which address pops up in your pursuits? Look at some of the streets we saw in the fortress of the flesh, living life from our physical frame, living life having power over others, living life jealous of others, living life, life envying others, living life apart from God. Or do you want to find your address on the streets and the avenues of the community of the Spirit? On a street named love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Where do you want your mind to dress to be located? Where do you want to live life from? The fortress of the flesh or the community of the spirit? Father God, thank you for your work within us to bring us to a place in life where we choose to follow you. We choose to change our address by virtue of the Spirit's work within us. We, we choose to follow Jesus. And so, Lord Jesus, for each and every one of us who has followed your leading to change our address, our mind address, the place from which we live life, to be a community of the Spirit, I say thank you. And Father, for any person who's got both feet firmly planted in the fortress of the flesh, living life there. Oh, I'm grateful that they're listening today. And Father, I pray that you, by, their, by your spirit, would draw them into the community of life and love where Jesus lives, where you live, where we live alive in the spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, do that work now, I pray. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a fitting way for us as we finish this series on the Holy Spirit to acknowledge by sharing a meal with Jesus that we're in his neighborhood. He's changed our address. The Spirit has brought us into the community of the Spirit. And in the community of the Spirit, we gather together, we gather around with other brothers and sisters in Christ, and we share a meal given to us by the Holy Spirit. So I invite you, take a piece of bread, a little cracker of some sort, break a piece off, take a juice, a small portion, a, a way of being reminded what Jesus said to us, and the scripture records, on the night he was betrayed, he, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same way, when the meal was finished, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is the cup of a new covenant. My blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. And scripture then reminds us, that as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do remember our Lord's death until he comes again in glory. So, brothers and sisters, let us take and eat and drink of Jesus, acknowledging we're incorporated into him, acknowledging we're invited into the community of the Spirit, and let it be our way of saying yes, the Spirit has changed my mind to dress. I see life differently now because Jesus is within me. Take and eat. Pray with me. Jesus, thank you that you have changed our address, that we live life from a different place, 
in a place where you rule and reign, a place where your kingdom is alive and active, a place where your spirit has drawn us together into community with him, with you, and with our Father, and with each other as well. So Spirit of the Living God, continue to invite and to draw and to bring people into your community. Use us, Lord Jesus, as you choose. And we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.